said, Maria. Okay, so I've just finished a book called um, Blind Sight by Kat Nolan. I think that's how you say her first name. I'm not exactly sure how you pronounce it. It's spelled K A I T, I think. But, so I'm not exactly sure how I pronounce first name, so I'm really sorry, I apologise in advance if I'm saying a name wrong, but um, she's done this book called Blind Side, and it's actually an interesting little book, and um, before I get into the book, I just want to say thank you very much to everybody who suggested books for me to read, book suggestions, and I will get to them, I already have some downloads onto my Kindle, and I'm going to, and I'm waiting for some to come into the store and I'm checking the stores, I'm checking shops to see if I see any and if I do I'll pick them up and I'll do a book review of them. And these reviews are going to be possibly every month or maybe every two week, two to three weeks depending how long it takes me to read the box. It's going to be a month at the most. But I don't miss them because it's just a short book, it was a short story, and it looked intriguing. And I'll tell you a little bit about the characters first, then I'll go into the good points, the bad points, the grey area points, and other aspects of it. Okay, but the first character is Ransom. Ransom is a thief, a bounty hunter. It's kind of a grey character, or I felt he was a grey character. He's kind of not altogether good, but he's not alt completely altogether bad. It sounds like he's doing what he does to survive. And he, he, he seems to be the uh, protagonist of the book, uh, well the male protagonist of the book and I think what we're, what's going to happen is we're going to see like his character change and we'll find out more about him as the story goes on because I should explain that these short stories are just kind of like one, a book is a chapter, oh, that's the impression I've got about each book is a chapter rather than doing an old book, the, each small book is or seems to be a chapter of what's going on, and um, so I think that I think that's kind of like good in one respect because you go and you buy the next one if you liked it, but if you if you liked it and you don't have the money to actually buy the second book, it's like but I don't know what's going on. Now maybe in the end what she'll do is combine combine all the books together to make one big book, which I hope she does because. It is a fascinating story. And then you get um, Aisha. I think that's how you say it's pronounced in because I'm terrible with punctuations. And I'm artistic, blaming on that. Um, she's a seer. And she was taken from a village at the age of, I think she said in the book, between four and five she was taken and it's just taken as a child and she she's um when she's kidnapped she's taken this king this lord um and it's put out that she's his long lost daughter that she's his daughter and that's why we spin it that she's actually living there and i'll come she's there now uh, but as she gets older um, it's obvious that uh, pe either people just brush it off now or it's obvious that it sh it's been a lie all along that she's not his daughter. The Lord of the King sounds at first like a nice character but as the story progresses it comes clear that he's not really that nice. Um, he's the one who odds the attack on Aisha's village. <coughs> Sorry. 
and he's, he's kills a lot of people and he's kind of like using her ability as a seer to win battles and to find out what his future is. Kind of, if you've ever seen Scorpion King with The Rock and there's a seer in that and the third of uh, the leader, the um, antagonist, antagon- antagon- the bad guy <laughs> in that is he's kind of using the seer in that for the similar kind of reasons where he's just using her for the ability to see the future and I think that's kind of what's going on here in this relationship between Aisha and Biel. I think that's what again one one thing I should should say is some of the names are really hard because they're kind of like Celtic so that's one thing I do struggle with is some of the names but also as well, like this uh, possibility. I'm sorry if I'm looking down, but I'm just checking my notes. Um, that's one thing I, I did get a little bit creeped out is that it's hinted or insinuated that the king sexually abused Aisha, um, sexually or physically abused Aisha, and that was kind of it. You know, she was taking when she was kids, like what age did that start? And but I kind of felt really uneasy that aspect of it but you know she, she she does get rescued in in this part of her book so hopefully that's gonna come back to bite him on the ass and ransom kills him <laughs> well not in this book but hopefully in the future Okay, now some aspects of this book did remind me of Infernal Devices, and I know I mentioned Infernal Devices so much in my videos, but it's a great book, that's what I'm going to say. Um, but some aspects of this did remind me of Infernal Devices, Clockwork Angel, and it was kind of more like the rescue, because even though Aisha is a prisoner, she's pretty much free to do what she wants in the home. Now that, that didn't remind me of Infernal Devices because when um, Tessa is kidnapped in, kidnapped in Infernal Devices um, she's locked in a room, she's not allowed to do anything but when Ransom rescues Aisha she kind of it's just kind of like oh what are you, who are you doing kind of thing and for them, like, they're going through tunnels and um, they're being chased as they're getting out, and so that kind of, Aisha is very much a Tessa Grey character. She is the heroine. She's a female protagonist, and she's she is kick-ass. You know, like it's, she seems to be a very strong woman. It's just kind of, like, and you kind of get the feeling she's been trying to escape, but she's not really got. The plan sorted in the red, or she's worrying about other people. But when she does, or when you kind of like see her realize that she that she is getting out, because she's going to escape. The kick-assness kicks in, and you know you see this all on the side of her, and like she she's very kind, very curving, or she appears to be, or and she comes across as this very kind, very curving person. So yeah, I, I do like I, Aisha. I do like her. And Ransom is, I just love the name Ransom, he is, so, he is pretty cool because he's a very Will Herndale type of character. And right, Brie, right, again this is a Celtic name that I do find hard to pronounce. Um, even in mind of very much Mark May and like I said, even though like, Mark May never abused or did anything to Tessa, you know, it kind of insinuated that Mark Mar- Main did want to do something to Tessa and in this book it's kind of insinuated that Bray, Bray, I think I have to try or get someone who can tell me how to pronounce his name. I'll write it down and if anybody can tell me how you pronounce this name I will be forever grateful.
Okay, the good things about this story is it has vampires, it has dragons, it has fae, it has goblins, it has trolls, skinwalkers, wolf shifters, werewolves, and it's set in New Orleans. You know, so anything that's set in New Orleans has paranormal creatures, fancy ant things in, it's caught my attention. If, at first, I didn't actually read about what was going on or what was about the book was about. It just caught my eye, and I didn't actually realise it had vampires and dragons and werewolves and wolf shifters. And so, yeah, it was a surprise. It was a nice surprise that it did, and it really did capture me. Um, the other good things. Is that the girls are kick ass in it? And um, like I say, at first, you know, like she's she's nowhere near a damsel in distress. You know, like she's planning her escape. She wants to escape. Ransom shows up and gives her a way out. You know, like he's he's there and she sees the opportunity and she seizes the opportunity to get out to escape. So like she she's not a damsel in distress by no means. Um. She, she is planning an escape, it's not that she needs rescuing. Um, the other good thing is that it feels like it's a bigger part of the story, so you want to know what's going on, what's going to happen next, um, what's, what's going to happen, what's just happened, you know. And, um, yeah, that, the fact that you get captured in this world and it's kind of like it feels like a world you already know, even though like it's different and it's new. If you've read other books like this, it feels like it's in a genre and a story or a world you already know. And this could fit into any fandom. That's why I'm at the moment. If it be Game of Thrones, if it be Vampire Diaries, if it be Shadowhunters, if it be Supernatural, you know, it fits into that genre so nicely and how like, the accuracy crossovers going on like, like I said you've got Shadowhunters this could cross over very nicely with Shadowhunters and that kind of thing so yeah that, that is that was something I did love the fact that it's a new world a new story but I felt like I already knew the world and I already knew the story And the bad thing is, it feels like it's part of a bigger story. <laughs> um, yeah, the only thing is, is at the start of it, I kind of felt like I'd missed a lot. Or it kind of felt like somebody else's point of view. Like it's something like that um, they did for, or when, God, when they did the grey even though I've never actually read Grey, but kind of done from Fifty Shades, done from um, Christian Grey's point of view. In my, I've not read it, but I know roughly what it is. So, yeah, it kind of felt like that, that this was something going on in something else, and we were seeing this happening through somebody else's point of view until towards the end. And they get out of where they are and um, then that it then it can like become their own story but yeah i maybe i misunderstood that part um but yeah that was kind of the only real negative thing i can say the other negative is it i didn't understand what time period it was in because when i absurd i thought it was um set in medieval times, but then it can't. They start to talk about keypads and credit cards and mobile phones and um, offshore banking. And in fact, it's a line Elisa says she just before they try to get out the room over over here. She sticks her head out the door and says, "Um, to the guards, hey, look, my TV's packed in my visuals." Not working. I can't can't watch my video. Can you come and have a look at me, please? 
And that was the first thing I found. Hang on a minute, what, what time period is this? Um, it's cool if it is in modern times because, like, it's alternative universe. Um, or steampunk kind of thing. Even like, it's uh, talking about TVs and that's not steampunk, but it's kind of like that steampunk thing where it's kind of like in this world, but older worldy and that kind of feeling. But yeah, that, that kind of like, confused me. The fact that they was talking about modern day equipment and I got the impression because she was talking about when she was kidnapped as a kid from a village and a village being ransacked and raided and but then like she and she starts to pump modern day things which did confuse me did for me a little bit okay again this is kind of like a mixed um mixed thing again it was the terminology that she's like I've just explained it was kind of like one minute I thought it was medieval but then she's talking about putting on a t-shirt and a hoodie and that that kind of like hang on a minute but what time period is this and you know, talking about all the modern day things again but I can live with it you know it didn't take away from the story I just wish she'd have kept it in one decades like medieval or modern. Now there's a line where they say even those with rich blood uh, were not meant for much teleportation. Now maybe if they teleported into modern day um, world and I missed the part, I misread the part where they start off in medieval England of medieval America well, me medieval times and then they jump, they teleport into modern day and because they've got this teleportability they can do that and that's all they know of the modern dresses or maybe it's a, this timeline crossing over. I, that part I didn't understand, I didn't actually get that but again I did, didn't think it too, too much away from the story. I felt like she did kind of, she did set it in medieval and um, modern day times. That gives it a unique twist as well because a lot of the exception of Vampire Diaries, True Blood, one or two others, you don't really get much on um, mortal instruments. Um, you don't really get much books. That's fantasy with fantasy links that are set in modern day. So that, that was a nice twist that it was or she had elements from modern day as well. Anyway, I um, I think I've covered everything there. Um again I just want to say thank you to everybody who suggested other books for me to read and I am looking into getting them. I just did this one because it was a free book and it just caught my eye. So I, that's why I've done this one first. But for now, I'll say I love you lots and lots like jelly tots and I keep it freaking weird. Bye.